I am not a morning person, so mornings are a challenge. So I simply get up, have breakfast. I do not exercise in the morning. I'm not wide enough awake to exercise. And I go into the office. You have to remember that I live in the South. And somehow Southerners have forgotten that they are no longer a farming community. So things start very early in the morning. And I have my first conference at 7.30 a.m. By about 10.30 in the morning, I'm wide awake and I'm a real human being. But until then, I essentially function on autopilot. Probably the best vacation we ever took was to Galapagos, only because it seemed part of another world, it seemed part of evolutionary history. Both of us read a lot of Darwin before we went, and rather than go on a large cruise ship, we went on a small boat so that we could go into the small harbors and do wet landings. And it was so casual that dinner was whatever the crew got out of the sea, and getting dressed for dinner meant you put on a clean t-shirt, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful vacation. I like history, and my favorite author at the moment is Churchill. I'm going back and reading many of the Churchill books about the war. He was just an amazing, I, I can't really call him a politician because he really wasn't that much of a politician, but he was a strategist. And many of the military people would have made decisions other than what he did, but obviously what he did was right on. I'm a regular exerciser in early evening before dinner, and I have a stationary bicycle, an arm leg Schwinn, and regularly I do about 30 minutes on the bicycle, and then we have a pool in the house, so I'll do some swimming as well. Well, I drink two cups of very good coffee in the morning, my coffee that I make and then probably about two cups of hospital coffee. But my hospital coffee is good hospital coffee because our administrative assistant makes French press coffee for us. That's the luxury of our office suite. On good night six, on bad nights five. Probably my source of pride is raising awareness about heart disease in women. Because when I trained, when I began my practice, heart disease was considered a man's disease. And women were just not in the scene. And of course, when I saw women in my practice and in the hospital, they had heart disease. And I began asking the questions and beginning to derive the answers I enrolled a large number of women and men in my vision, and we began to improve outcomes for women. Are we there yet? Not nearly, but certainly we're on the road, and there are very, very many fine scientists, both women and men, trying to elucidate the issue of heart disease in women. Well, sadly, when I was training, there were no women ahead of me. But fortunately, I had many male mentors who were gender blind. During my medical school training, Dr. Herman Bloomgard at the Beth Israel Hospital in Boston was my mentor, as was Dr. Louis Wolf. And then during residency training, my chief was the great Dr. Charles Friedberg. And again, women were unusual in the medical scene. And when I came to see his patients, he would introduce me to them by saying, this is the doctor who will guide the care of your grandchildren. And all of a sudden, I became very acceptable to his often very prestigious patients. Finally, during my early faculty years at the Emory University School of Medicine, again, someone who was gender blind who was Dr. Willis Hurst. His emphasis was on excellence. And if you joined him on the quest of excellence, 
essentially that was your passport. It was our 50th wedding anniversary and whereas many people have large parties and such, we did something very different. We took all our children and grandchildren away for a week between Christmas and New Year's, which is the only time anyone had available, and we had a week of wonderful fun. And that is frozen in time in my memory. I would have done constitutional law. When I was in college, I had a fantastic history professor, Mary Latimer Gambrell, from the famous Gambrell family in the South. And she taught constitutional law. And she emphasized to me what a mistake I made applying to medical school. She said I should have gone to law school, but that would have been a very easy second choice.